Hi, my name is Mike Wang. I'm a university professor here at the University of Miami. I'm a neurosurgeon. And this is gonna be the first in a series of YouTube videos that we are putting together uh, for the AANS, which is the American Association of Neurological Surgeons. It's intended to sort of uh, spark interest as well as answer some questions about folks who are interested in becoming advanced practice providers. And so if you don't know what that means, they used to be called physician extenders. Essentially, it relates to folks uh, like physician assistants, nurse practitioners, and CRNAs. So they're intended to do uh, a job sort of intermediate between, uh, if you will, sort of like a nursing role and a doctor's role. So it's a very interesting, exciting area, and I would tell you that during the COVID pandemic, we've really seen the role of the APPs against the advanced practice providers expand because of their importance in, in COVID care, in the ICUs, in intubations, and the caring for the, the, the very sick folks that have had the coronavirus. So today I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Jackie Beloga. Jackie's a uh, physician assistant, right? Yep. Here at the University of Miami. She works with us in the spine uh, division, if you will. And Jackie has been uh, sort of one of our um, sort of right-hand people in terms of getting things rolling and taking care of our patients and running the administrative side of our practice. So uh, welcome to the show, Jackie. Thank you. So today we wanted to cover some of the topics of being a PA because a lot of the folks we talked to today will be nurse practitioners, right? Maybe you can start by telling, do you, do you see any differences in the roles here in Florida between a PA and a nurse practitioner? So the biggest difference that I noticed is our training is all medical based. Uh, we don't have any nursing background based. Like going through PA school, it was uh, um, all uh, stuff governed by the Board of Medicine. and. Um, one of the biggest differences in our training as well is that uh, we had specific uh, rotations that were designated to be in the OR. Like we were trained to be first assistants in the operating room and that was incorporated into our clinical rotations. I did I think three separate rotations just in surgery so um, that's different from um, an, an NP because they actually have to go to a separate uh, certification course to go to the OR for it. So. Yeah, I remember that when you started here, uh, it's been quite a few years mm -hmm. now, you would come to the, seven years, yeah, you come to the operating room every every day and mm -hmm. assist us and you tie and sew mm -hmm. and all that. And in nursing, as you're saying, you would have to be like an RN first assistant. Correct, right? yeah. To yeah. go to a separate certification. That's a whole separate track, RNFA, yeah. So when you were, uh, maybe you can tell us, when you were younger, did you envision yourself in this role? How did you come to go to PA school and all that? Like, what were you thinking? So uh, I actually started PA school right out of high school. I was in high school and I knew I wanted to get in the medical field. I was actually thinking about going to med school. So I was kind of looking at different options. Um, uh, an NP actually, actually came up as well. Uh, I went to this, um, uh, it was an educational um, seminar, I guess. It was held at, at a local hospital and they started talking about uh, a physician assistant. I didn't really know what that was at the time. This would have been, you know, I was 17, I guess. And um, I started learning more about it. And there was a, a PA there that described exactly what um, he did and uh, you know what the schooling he went through. And I looked more into it, and I thought that it was better suited for my for what I had envisioned for my my future and my life. So I was able to get into the PA program right out of high school. I was in a, um, it was a five year uh, master's program. So you start off uh, as a freshman, and you do all your core classes like the biology and chemistry, and and then as you progress, it um, there's co for there's courses focused just for PAs, like we had a cadaver lab and um, our physiology courses, and, and my graduate work was all strictly um, stuff for PA, so. And so five years out of high school, so that's mm -hmm. if you, like, you got a bachelor's and a master's, right? Right, so after the fourth year was the master's of science, and then you can just continued on and you got your master's after that. And you, you went to school in Pennsylvania, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so if, let's say you've already gone to college, I don't know if you're familiar with how you do this, let's say you've already graduated and then you want to go to PA school, how does that work? So you have to have uh, a bachelor's uh, degree in science and I think it has to be specifically biology. You have to have all these core classes or prerequisites. So if you have all those, then you can apply to the program, but it's an uh, extra two years. So you, it's like how a master's are normally usually a two-year extra program. So you would have to do an extra year, basically, if you don't start from the beginning in the program. And that must have been tough because on the one hand, it's, it, it might be very relevant, but you're doing a lot of practical studies very early after high school, right? You were very mm -hmm. young at the time. Yeah. How was that? Uh, I mean, it was tough. Like a lot of my friends would go out and party, and I had to study. But um, but it was um, I knew I wanted to do it, and I loved it. Like I loved do learning what I was learning. So it, for me, it was definitely worth it. Um, but it's definitely you have to put a lot of time into it. Like it was uh, a lot of things I had to give up, 
um, like San Francisco parties and you know friends doing things uh, on the weekends or during the week that I would have to stay home and study for it. But ultimately, I knew I wanted to do it, so it was worth it for me. Yeah, you've done a great job here in Miami. Um, do you, you don't need a master's, though, right? Do you, is that a requirement? Uh, it's, it is now. So when I, I kind of got grandfathered in, but I already have a master's. But when I was in the program initially, um, and I finished in 2008, so initially you did not have to have a master's. Over the, I think even just the last, um, within the last five years for sure, maybe ten years, they now have changed them all into master's programs. Mm -hmm. And as you graduate, so you walk through mm -hmm. for your graduation and you've got your bachelor's and your master's, do you need to do any other clinical training or can you just start working? So you can just start uh, right away. They have a, a residency actually for um, uh, surgical PAs if they wanted to kind of determine what kind of uh, specialties and surgery they want to do. Um, but it's not required. Like in reality, most of my training was kind of through experience on the job. I started. I was in a neurosurgery um, uh, private practice right out of school, and that, if anything, that first year gave me the most experience out of anything, just because you're hands on, and there wasn't any residents or anything. So, so you know, so if you think about the breadth of PA work, it, it really is quite large. You've already alluded to working in the operating room, but you can also work maybe in an emergency room mm -hmm. or a private clinic or something like that, right? Yep. Um, when you when you started working, like what did you find were the big challenges, you know, in, in starting? Was it that you you felt really well prepared, or was it the patient interactions? What were the things that were kind of tougher for you when you first started that, that you had to adjust to? Um, I gotta think back. It's been a while though. Um, I think it was more um, since I was in, been in the specialty the whole time. I think it was more just that um, when I was in school, it was very generalized and broad, like you're broad based. You're learning everything, OBGYN. Cardi cardiology, everything. So it was more when I started in a neurosurgical specialty that uh, I had to, I guess, really focus more on that track. And that was, um, I guess, one of the biggest challenges is I went from knowing a little bit about everything to now having to focus on being, you know, an expert in a certain uh, field. So. And is there like a certifying exam you have to take when you graduate? Yes, there's a board a board certification. Yeah. Okay. And how is mm -hmm. like that? Is that a six hour exam or is it a three yes, day exam? Yes. The, the initial one's a six hour exam. Um, and uh, that's your initial certification. Initially, they had you recertify every five years, and recently now they change it to every 10. So I'm actually, I had re done my first recertification, I think it was um, six years ago, or no, way before I came here, so I would have okay. been, I guess, seven years ago. And so then I'm due, I guess, in two years now for my 10-year research. And when you recertify, you take the same exam as the original one, or is it a different it's one? A, it's a re different one, it's a recertification. It's shorter, I think it's only four hours, but it's, uh, but it's still long. But um, they actually are now focusing uh, things. You can do a um, more focused uh, uh, exam on surgery, or if you're in um, orthopedics or something, you can do a more focused orthopedic one. So they're actually now, um, uh, in the years I've been a PA, they've kind of altered the, the recertification exam to fit more what you do. Yeah, that makes sense, because if you don't do OBGYN, for example, right. and you haven't done it for 30 years, it's, it would be weird to have right. to study yeah. that stuff. So I, I don't have to do that stuff anymore. <laughs> yeah, and then it, it tells about like how you function like in regards to clinical practice with physicians. We're here at the University of Miami. It's an academic center. We have residents and fellows. Um, it's probably a little different than a lot of other practices, but tell us a little bit about how you function uh, in your daily life. Like, you know, you see patients independently. Mm -hmm. what, what exactly yep. do you do? So, uh, well, my, I'm also doing administrative things now, so my schedule is kind of divided, but um, mm -hmm. I'm uh, helping, in the surgeon clinics, I'm helping uh, doing the history and physical and kind of uh, getting the patient started, especially for the new patients, getting the history and physical exam and looking for any abnormalities. And then um, uh, I help with uh, order, putting in orders and dictating And when I'm helping in the surgery clinics. Uh, on Mondays and Fridays, I have my own clinic. Um, so a lot of times it's a triage clinic where there's a new patient who's never been seen, doesn't have any imaging, coming in with certain complaints, and um, I kind of work them up to see what's going on with them. Or, or there's post-ops who are a couple weeks post-op who are um, checking to make sure that their wound's okay and they're not having any major issues from surgery. Or even follow-ups, how I had ordered imaging on them since they came in as a new, and now we're reviewing the new imaging, so. Sorry. So it's a mix of both. And, and then I've actually, so one of the more recent roles I took on is um, an administrative role, um, helping plan the schedule for um, the other MPs and helping, um, I guess, to make sure that um, any issues that they're having, I'm bringing them to attention to whoever's attention they need to go to. So. Now, our intended audience uh, are people that are 
thinking about going into this field and becoming PAs or nurse practitioners. So can you offer some advice, maybe some, some guidance for them? If, if someone's sitting at home, maybe they graduated from college, maybe they're in high school and they're thinking, well, I'd really like to, um, to pursue this career. Like, can you give them some early advice, early career advice on th things like how to prepare or what to watch out for, like that, you know? Um, well, how to prepare, I mean, it, it, I guess it comes down to like what you ultimately see yourself doing in life. Because if you, uh, the, the, I guess the reason between I didn't go to med school versus PA school is because I, and my, my whole thing was like, well, I would rather kind of get school done as soon as I can and start working as soon as I can and then be able to still have flexibility in my schedule, which is one of the biggest things, honestly, that um, is different between like a, maybe um, uh, going to med school versus going to PA school is that you can have more, uh, your schedule can be a little more flexible and your your career can be more flexible like if you wanted to switch from one thing to another. Um, and if you're if you're in med school, obviously you're um, you're going to a certain residency and you're um, having staying with that specialty the whole time. So um, I guess it's more just a kind of if you know what you want to do, it's you, it's it's easier to focus on that course versus if you're. Uh, as if you know what you want your future to be. <laughs> I mean, and it. certainly if you look at just the salaries for someone like a PA or nurse practitioner versus, uh, say, a pediatrician, right? In terms of like the number of years of schooling and the student debt and all that, it's not a bad proposition, right? right. Because yeah, that's one of the. I mean, because and that's actually I was lucky enough not to have any uh, student loans, so you have to take a lot more loans out, of course, for for med school. Um, and right, the salary honestly is from you know they're similar, right? So someone's uh, you know doing pediatric versus a, a, especially a neurosurgical special specialty, so. Uh, they can be comparable, I guess. Yeah, so we we really thank you a lot for all that you do every day to help our patients. You take care of very complicated problems and patients here at University of Miami, and thank you for sharing some of your thoughts with us. I would uh, turn your attention, if you're interested in this or if you're already on the track, to the AANS uh, course offerings for APPs, uh, if you're interested in that as a specialty.